Hi everyone, and welcome to our new series Metal X Lending. In this series, we'll be showing you the different ways to lend or borrow on the Metal X platform. We'll go through each process step by step and explain all the key parameters and values that play an important role. In this first episode, we'll start by getting an overview of these parameters, because they'll be crucial to understanding the lending and borrowing conditions in every episode going forward. Alright, let's jump in. We're starting on the Metal X lending page to get a first look at what tokens are available for borrowing and lending. Right now, we can see options like Ripple, USDC, Bitcoin, and a few others. Each comes with different stats, like how much has been deposited or borrowed, and different APYs for lending and borrowing. We'll focus on Ripple for this video and take a closer look at the key metrics. This video is all about understanding what those numbers mean, not yet about how the lending or borrowing process works. We'll get to that step by step in the upcoming videos. All Deposit Section Here we see the total amount of Ripple tokens currently supplied for lending. At the time of recording, that's around 4.38 million XRP, priced at $3.12 per token, which gives a total value of about $13.68 million. All Borrow Section this section shows how many Ripple tokens have already been borrowed and their market value. Here we can see that around 199,000 XRP have currently been borrowed, with a total market value of about $622,000. Now let's move on to one of the most important parameters, the APY. APY stands for Annual Percentage Yield, and it tells you the percentage return you'll either earn or pay when lending or borrowing a specific token. There are two terms you'll see next to APY, earn or pay, and it's pretty straightforward. If it says earn, you're earning that percentage on the tokens based on the specific loan interaction. If it says pay, you're paying that percentage for the token and the type of loan interaction involved. For lending, the APY will always show earn since you're getting a return on your supplied assets. For borrowing, it could say pay, meaning you pay interest, or even earn, meaning you actually get rewarded for borrowing. Sounds strange? Let's dive into that. Hovering over the APY value gives us more details. Before we get into that, just a quick heads up, the overview screen on the website sometimes rounds numbers to two decimal places. The detailed view often shows more precision, like three or four decimals. So don't get confused by the rounding. The loan tokens are essentially rewards for using the platform, whether you're borrowing or lending. The distribution of these tokens depends on governance proposals and decisions made by the community on the XPR governance page. How that system works exactly is something we'll cover in a separate video. So, to sum up. For lending XRP, we earn 0.02% in XRP and 0.4% in loan tokens. But what about borrowing XRP? Let's check it out. Hovering over the borrow APY shows that, for borrowing XRP, you actually receive loan tokens worth 13.46% APY, but you pay 0.58% in XRP. These percentages are always based on the amount of XRP you've borrowed. So why are you getting rewards just for borrowing? Well, the loan protocol incentivizes borrowing. It wants users to take out loans, to participate in the ecosystem, or take part in governance. That's why in some cases, borrowing can even earn you more than it costs. But why are the APYs for lending Ripple so low right now? Let's look at the utilization rate, the ratio of borrowed tokens to the total supplied. We have 4.38 million XRP deposited and just 199,000 XRP borrowed. That's a utilization rate of only 4.55%. So only a small fraction of XRP in the system is being borrowed. This tells us the platform isn't in need of more XRP liquidity right now, so it offers a lower APY for lending. On the flip side, the positive APY for borrowing is designed to attract more borrowers. So here's a general rule. The lower the utilization rate, the lower the APY, and vice versa. Let's take a look at USDC, which shows the opposite situation. With 3.78 million USDC deposited and 3.38 million borrowed, we get a utilization rate of 89.42%. That's high, and because of that, both lending and borrowing USDC now come with high APYs, even though loan token rewards are only a small part of it. These high APYs might seem surprising, but here's the deal. To bring more USDC liquidity into the system, or to discourage more borrowing, 
the protocol increases APYs, making lending more attractive and borrowing less so. And here's a really important point. APYs are variable and change in real time based on market conditions. Loan token rewards can change, and utilization rates are always shifting. So if you're lending tokens, you should regularly check if the return is still worth it. And even more critically, if you're borrowing, you really need to keep an eye on the APY. You might start with an APY where you're earning rewards, but if demand spikes or deposits drop, utilization could shoot up, and suddenly you're paying a high rate on your borrowed tokens. So just remember, APYs are dynamic. They can change at any time. All right, that's enough numbers for today. In the next videos, we'll walk through the actual steps of lending and borrowing, and look at other key parameters, like loan health and liquidation fees. I hope this gave you a clear overview so far. Looking forward to seeing you in the next episode, where we'll actually lend out some USDC together. Until then, take care and see you next time. Your XPR Block Producer, Bloxbroad.